I cannot believe another two weeks has already gone by and we're approaching the halfway point in our 5K challenge. So it is time for a bit of an update on that. And we've been amazed by how many of you have been getting involved in this 5K challenge, either following Heather or my own program. So we thought we'd answer a few questions that you've been sending in to us. But to start off with, let's give Heather a call and find out how she's been getting on. Hey Heather, how's it going? Yeah, good thanks Mark. Um, I did have a little wobble sort of week or so ago, but um, I'm back on track now and yeah, I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment, but how, how are you finding it? Have you hit any bumps in the road yet? Um, you're going to be surprised here given my low volume, but actually over the bank holiday weekend, I, I just got stuck into housework <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I decided to postpone the odd run and then suddenly I realised I was running out of time to get it. It all just caught up and then I got stuck into Zwift racing and got distracted. So, but the nice thing with mine is it's so short that it's fairly easy to catch up. I'm, I'm still kind of like one run behind, but I'll figure it so out. So you're chasing, you're not, you're not letting them go. You're, you're banking. No, your... no. <laughs> um, how, how are you getting on with the treadmill though? Um, it's yeah, very different have, to mine. Yeah, I have to admit that like we've been really lucky, haven't we, in the UK recently that the weather's really nice. Um, so I have popped out for a couple of my runs and, you know, we're obviously allowed to get out for one bit of exercise a day so I've been taking the most of that um, but also like the track Thursdays what we're doing with GTN have been quite helpful because they make me do one of my sessions it's like one of my key sessions a week and although it's been a little bit of a tricky balance because I've got to fit in sort of uh, a slightly more intense session than really what my program should be so I'm finding that balance and as a result it's still an hour's run and I kind of enjoy the motivation of running with others and it's really nice having you on track side and, and the mm. GTN kind of team helping with it but then I've got to kind of go and finish it afterwards so that one's been a bit of a challenge but it's quite a nice way to sort of break the week up and kind of yeah I guess just give me like a, a, a run that I have to do because I'm quite a procrastinator otherwise. <laughs> yeah there's also well like the aspect of us having to run solo we're doing mm. all of this on our own now which you know I guess everyone is having to deal with but mine again is very different to yours yeah. so like for me I'm fine because there's fairly short and focused a I know that well it's in half an hour's time or so I'm going to be over and done with but also there's so much to do in that half an hour that I'm on it and I'm just racing the clock yeah so I'm, I'm almost like actually enjoying it I'm not missing the company so much at the moment but it's very early days but I'd imagine that's quite different for yourself yeah it is but I guess for you like the sort of sessions you're doing and the kind of session you would do on a track and that is the kind of session you do in company in some ways so. mm. yeah I probably could do with the help and getting pushed along at times I, I've definitely drifted off pace but um, tell me a little bit more about your struggle week then um, well it was self-inflicted and I think my bank holiday weekend basically was completely opposite to yours and I didn't really do any DIY that I was supposed to and I just kind of got carried away with lots of exercise including um, it kind of all built up so I did the Thursday track run then Friday I did a bit of a whopping cycle when I spent far too many hours on the saddle um, followed by the long run on Saturday it was really hot and then um, Sunday was another cycle followed by a hard run on Monday or the hard <laughs> long run and by Tuesday I all I had to do was an easy jog that was it on Tuesday and I have never felt 40 minutes of just so it literally I felt like I could just lie on the ground right there and then for every stride and it was mentally just really weirdly tough and I'd like in my head I was like right I'm gonna have an easy week next week and I'm backing right off but I've kind of, I think I've recovered and I've, I've come out the other side. But um, yeah, I've got a couple of shots from um, my, from one of my tough long runs. One day, which isn't my favorite, but it's easy. Well, it's steady. That's the great thing about the long run. The hardest part is actually getting out the door and I've done that. So yeah, I've done one step closer. The major step closer. Anyway, as you can see, it's a pretty glorious day, so I don't really have any excuses. And it's just a matter of getting time on feet, so keeping moving forwards. And I really try not to look at my watch and just go with the flow, especially when I'm running on quite a hilly or rough road route. And yes, you're probably saying, why am I not on the treadmill? Well, I think we've mentioned a few times. At, on GTN that we're really lucky in the UK we're allowed outside for one bit of exercise a day and I just have to 
admit that I can't face running on a treadmill for my long run. I just can't do it. So I'm out getting my one pound of exercise and my very much needed vitamin D and fresh air. Right, you're gonna have to excuse me through here because I've got to look where I'm going. Ooh. Oh, super. Well, I'm glad you're back on track. I, I have to admit there's not really much to report from my end. I'm, I'm kind of still improving, I hope at least. I feel better. I still am feeling that lightness on the feet and yeah, it's, I'm getting each session done. Cool. Well, I've seen that. We've had loads of comments, which is great. And quite a lot of people asking about more about your recovery routine and what you've been up to. Have you got something to show us? Yeah, I, I touched on it last week um, and I've actually filmed my routine for you to see now. Okay, so I thought I'd run you through actually what I kind of do before a lot of my runs, and that's some activation. I also do a lot of recovery stuff, so stretching and foam rollering using this bad boy. Um, but I'll leave that. I thought the activation stuff would be quite interesting, and as we said already, I had quite a few questions around that. So this is all about trying to get my glutes to fire, um, something I've noticed isn't working very well for me. Um, so you just really quick, easy things that take about five minutes I'll do prior to a run. I'm trying to do before most runs. I'm not always successful, but I do my best. Um, so I do some clams, um, some single leg raises, um, some glute bridges, single leg glute bridges, and sometimes some single leg squats. So I just do a quick routine of those and that seems to do the job. So I thought I'd run you through it today. Um, I'm gonna start off with the clams. Okay, so using my miniature mat here on the floor, um, clams, just nice, well I like these just because you get to lie down and chill out. Um, but it's all about just getting that um, glute on the top to activate. So I've just got my hips stacked up upon each other, my knees nice and level, and my feet, I try to get my um, soles of my feet kind of in line with my back. Um, and then it's just about trying to get that glute to activate, so that's really switching on. You can just feel it if you like, put your hand on it. Um, so I tend to do somewhere around 10 to 20 on each side, swap over. Um, sometimes I'll run back through and do another rep. Um, and then we've got the single leg uh, or straight leg raise. So similar sort of action with the hips stacked upon each other. And I guess it's just extending that lever out, but it's getting the um, kind of like the hip into the loop. I'm not very good on my technical terms, but it seems to do a good job and gets that all controlled well. And then if I roll over onto my back, We've got the glute bridge, so if you start off just nice and simply, um, so heels just away, about a foot away from um, your bum, um, feet sort of shoulder width apart, and then we're trying to bring our hips up so they're nice and level with our um, shoulders and our knees, so you can like almost draw a line straight through and then control on the way back down. But really trying again to get those glutes working, I hope for those clams and um, straight leg raises have helped to activate that and get that going. There we go. And then we can progress from that into single leg glute bridges. So this takes a bit of control. Try not to shift your weight from side to side. I really like the single leg glute bridge. I feel like this does me some good. It's probably my favorite one, the swap leg. So really try and control it. But yeah, that's it. And then I might do um, occasionally a little single leg um, squat or just on the top of the stairs or something as I'm heading out. But I can sort of wrap that up in five minutes or less. Um, and that's just enough to, I know it's not perfect, but it's enough to just get me going um, and ready for the run. So really interesting, Mark, but are you finding they're making much of a difference? Because I know obviously you're doing a lot less mileage than you would have done previously when you were running a PB. Yeah, let's be honest, I'm, I'm probably not going to get as fit as I was when I got my 5k PB. Um, but the quality is definitely there and I'm giving it my best shot. I guess um, the big thing, or at least this is my attempt anyway, when I got my 5k PB, my volume was quite high, but I'd question whether my efficiency as a runner was there because I probably wasn't allowing or giving enough time to that. So that's what I'm focusing on. I'm trying to just use that time that I now have available with this lower volume to try and improve my efficiency as a runner to give myself the best shot possible. <laughs> so that's my uh, theory. Anyway, um, what are you doing recovery-wise? Um, I'm definitely not as motivated as you and I've kind of 
because so much of my time has been taking up running, I'm like, oh, I'm doing the minimum. Um, but I have found that a few sort of online yoga classes and there's one um, sort of S&C class that my friend runs every Wednesday morning that then I sign up so I have to do it and it's just going through like a, a routine but I find it really helps just doing yoga twice a week and a little bit of strength is yeah keeping me on track at the moment. All right, you can count on me for some geeky data analysis and some number crunching. So I've logged into my Polar Flow account here, which is essentially where all my data gets uploaded from my watch into um, a platform so that we can look at it all and analyze it to death. I've actually logged into the um, running index screen here, which is essentially where we can look at our efficiency as a runner and how that's changing. Now to put this into some perspective, uh, to be classed as elite, it needs to be anything above 70. Uh, when we started out with this, I hadn't been running that much, it was as low as 40 for some runs, which is still okay, but a considerable way off where it used to be and where it maybe needs to be if I want to hit anything close to the 15 minute mark for a 5K. You'll be pleased to know that it has come on um, substanti substantially. Today's run was 74, so back in that elite level, so that's come on very quickly. It's given me an average running index score of 64, um, and that has actually given me some predicted finish times for various distances. The 5K though, weirdly, it's, it suggested 19.30, which is slower than the 5K, the 16.55 5K that I posted at the start of this. So maybe I've, I've fooled the system here with my low volume, high intensity plan. Um, I also think maybe there's something around me having um, had years of running in my legs, um, and that's helped me to get that 16.55. Um, regardless of all that though, um, in terms of the paces, I feel much better as I keep saying. Um, my top end run speeds, I'm dipping below three minutes per K for some short efforts. Those threshold longer efforts, I'm going um, around 3.30 per kilometer um, and really feeling quite comfortable at that. Um, now when I did that first 5K, 16.55, that was around three minute 20 per kilometer. Um, I need to go around 3.06 per kilometer if I want to go 15 to 30, anything quicker obviously, I need to dip below that. Um, still a little way to go, but I'm definitely moving in the right direction. I'm hoping to get that running index score, the average at least, above 70 soon. Well, we can always rely on Mark to get geeky when it comes to data and great to see how he's progressing. I know I've had a little bit of a struggle, but we'll be bringing you another update of just how we're getting on in two weeks time. We're at the halfway point now and the next video will be getting close to the end of this 5K challenge. Let us know how you're getting on. We know quite a few of you guys are following us and joining in on this challenge. You can do that in the comments section below and check out our social media channels and give them a like and a follow.